Hello, welcome to another retro video. Today we're having a look at the game Zeppelin Giants of the Sky. It's an old DOS game that has also been ported to the Amiga and it's a business simulation game where you produce Zeppelins in a historical setting and you fly them around and you try to make a profit. It's been developed by the German guy Sven Vogelsang and I was fortunate enough to get an interview with him that you will see at the end of the video. And without further ado, let's check out the game. Imagine, you're in the early 1900s. Humanity has stayed on the ground for thousands of years, but now starts to conquer the skies. Giant airships are flying over your head, and you're following them with your eyes as you imagine the distant places they might be headed to. Welcome to the historical business simulation Zeppelin from 1994, where you manage your own airship company and take to the skies. Your main goal is to earn money through selling airships and flying goods and passengers all over the world. Your first humble airship can take a measly 5 passengers and one crate of cargo, so don't expect to make much money from that. Instead you will want to focus to get a contract to construct additional airships for a third party as soon as possible. To do so you have to fly to the correct location and win the contract negotiations against your competitors. Then you construct the airship and you can collect your reward. Most of that money goes into researching new airships and with bigger capacities and longer ranges these start to become a serious source of income while you wait for your next ship construction to finish. There are also aviation contests to be won, medals to be earned and the heart of a woman that you travel after throughout the world. And if you feel lucky you can also play the stock market or establish offices and trade routes all over the planet. In essence, it's a game about optimization, finding out the correct values and a bit of luck. Saving your game constantly is definitely advised, especially in the beginning when you don't want to lose your only airship to an accident. And it's also a game about the pioneers of flight, an era that many people might not be familiar with. Walking in those shoes gives you a bit of appreciation of how it must have been to live in these wondrous times with its emerging disruptive technology. Talking about technology, you might have spotted the unique art style of the game, which is no coincidence. In 1994, most games on DOS were running in VGA graphics mode that would normally display a resolution of 320 by 200 with 256 colors on screen. For a game that needs a lot of screen estate for UI and text, this low resolution is a real problem. Hence, the developer of Zeppelin decided to go for the much less common high resolution VGA mode of 640 by 480 pixels. The caveat of the higher resolution is that it can only display 16 colors at a time. Thus, the game is presented in a monochrome sepia tone that works with a lower color count and instills a unique nostalgic aesthetic for games at that time. So after returning to this game from my childhood, how does it play nowadays? Well, it suffers from the same issues many business simulation games did back then. It's a slow burn and once you figured it out there's not a lot of challenge left. I do like that it mixes things up later on when new zeppelins and trade rolls are introduced but it's not enough to really transform the whole experience. But I also kind of like games that form routines and the historical setting and your ever growing company gives you a good feeling of progression. The UI works well enough, which is anything but standard in games from that era and it definitely has its charm welcoming me back after all those years. If you're interested in the game's theme and enjoy 90s business simulation games, give it a go. Now, as mentioned in the beginning, I was able to contact the original developer of the game, Sven Vogelgesang, and he was kind enough to answer a few of my questions. Here's what he had to say. So, let's start with a short introduction. Who are you and how did you start game development? My name is Sven Vogelgesang and I am passionate about computers and especially about computer games since I experienced the first home computers in department stores in the early 1980s. When visiting these stores near my hometown in Heidelberg, I always went to the electronics sections with my friends to look and admire the computers and systems that were displayed there. At that time, I knew that I wanted to own such a computer to develop and play my own computer games. At the age of 12, I was so excited and lucky to get a Sinclair ZX81 with 1 kilobytes of memory. And the first thing I programmed was a real small simulation game of a country where you could harvest corn, buy goods and set taxes, of course just in text mode. 
At the age of 15, I earned my first money with computer games when publishing some smaller games for the Texas Instruments TI-99 4A in the computer magazine TI Review. Afterwards, I moved on to the Atari 8-bit line and was also leading a local computer club, the Atari Amstrad Computer Club, then later by Atari ST, Secession, the computer game for ST Deluxe magazine, to MS-DOS PCs, Secession for the PC Action magazine. My aim was always to program the games that I personally would enjoy and would like to have, but were not available on the market. I had always a special interest for business and historical simulations. I really enjoyed this kind of games. Later I studied medical informatics and here specialized on image and signal detection. During that time and before writing my master's thesis, the idea for Zeppelin came up and I developed Zeppelin Giants of the Sky. And how did you come about the idea for Zeppelin? And did you have other games or sources of inspiration? As already mentioned, I love business economic simulations and in addition I was always fascinated by airships and the era of the Zeppelins. I was reading books and articles about the development of the airship technology, the circumnavigation of the world and the polar expedition of the LZ-127 Graf Zeppelin under Dr. Hugo Eckener. I even had a radio play on cassette about the era of Zeppelins as a kid. The first version of the game was still called Airship, and at that time I didn't have much influence from other games. Later, when I further developed the concept with Icarion Kingsoft, we were also looking at concepts like Buzz Aldrin's Race into Space, where you are also developing new technologies or rockets during the game. One of my favorite computer games is Mule for the Atari 8-bit line. Some parts of the negotiations for airship contracts are inspired by Mule. Zeppelin had been your second game with historical background after the session. Did you have a personal interest in history or did that naturally evolve from the game ideas? My most favorite subject at school was always history. I was especially interested in the French Revolution, the American Civil War and the time at the beginning of the 20th century. I was also fascinated by the early aviation pioneers, especially the development of lighter than air technologies like the airships at the beginning of the 20th century. I think it was a combination of both, the general interest and the idea to create a game in a kind of black and white or sepia color scheme that brought me to the idea of Zeppelin. Players could also learn a lot about history between the years 1900 and 1940 via the news ticker showing historical events and facts during the game, and after every game year, the newspaper with the highlights of this year are shown. Could you tell us which programming language you used and how the idea came about to develop the game in the high-resolution 16-color mode with digitized images? I was always kind of frustrated about the computer graphics at that time. VGA had 320 by 200 pixels when using 256 colors. Nobody really used the higher resolution of 640 by 480 pixels because it had only 16 colors for games. At that time, I read an article and attended a lecture at university where it was mentioned that the human eye can distinguish more than 2 million different colors, but much fewer levels of gray, depending on literature, approximately 40 to 120 shades of gray. So I started to explore the idea to develop a computer game in black and white, because then I could use VGA 640 by 480 with 16 gray levels. I asked myself what kind of computer game could work in black and white only. It needed to be historical as this could also intensify the atmosphere of the game. And then I asked myself, why not develop something with airships and historic photos? Then I programmed a tool to reduce the number of colors of a picture to 16 gray levels and was impressed by the quality. It really looked like a black and white photo. Later I reduced it to 14 levels of gray, later sepia to get the historic touch, as I wanted to have two additional colors for other aspects in the game. You see this, for example, in planning the different routes for your airlines. The program itself was developed using different programming languages. For the sound and some other areas, assembler and machine code was used, while for the rest I used GFA Basic and the powerful GFA compiler that created very efficient code. From my point of view, one really interesting fact was that at one point in time the code was so large that I had challenges to compile it within MS-DOS as there was the well-known 640 kilobyte limit. To solve this, I used an MS-DOS window within OS2 which could manage 720 kilobytes in a CVGA window. After compilation, I could use again MS-DOS to run it. At the end of development, I still had to delete, unfortunately, some features to save memory. One was that the screen was shaking when the earthquake happens in San Francisco in 1906, and I had to delete an Easter egg. As I didn't have the time due to finishing my master thesis, 
The English version of Zeppelin was developed later by another developer using C. We had the idea to create a completely new CD-ROM version including historical videos, etc. But that never happened. But this was then the version used for the English-speaking market. This version has, from my point of view, some performance issues in different areas. For example, the news ticker on the main screen is too slow. The original German version is working much smoother. The Amiga version was developed after the MS-DOS version. Secession was still a one-man project. How did you get in contact with Icarion Software and how did the cooperation work out? My first version of Zeppelin was called Airships and was completely in black and white. Later we went to a sepia color scheme. I sent the demo to Kingsoft and shortly after they called me back mentioning that they will form a new label Icarion and that they are interested to further develop the game together with me. We met in their offices in Aachen and were discussing about adding some additional features to my initial game, for example two-player mode, airlines and some other features. We also decided to change the name to Zeppelin Giants of the Sky, which sounded much better. They also contracted a graphics artist who reworked my initial graphics and they asked Matthias Steinwax to create the soundtrack, which I really love. It's really great. There was later a special edition containing a music CD with the extended soundtrack. Really great interpretations of the original Zeppelin soundtrack with some funny extra tracks. For example, Zeppelin meets Bach, Zeppelin goes salsa, Zeppelin meets Floyd, or Zeppelin rocks. I'm very proud that he did the soundtrack. I recorded the different voices, for example the Kaiser congratulating when the player gets married or Jawohl, Sir. This was much more complicated than today. The development of a computer game was quite different in these days. All communication was done by a postal service, no internet. I programmed the new version, copied it on a 3.5 inch disc and sent it to the Kingsoft Icarion offices. The testing team sent me a list of bugs and we discussed additional ideas over the phone. New graphics were sent to me also on discs and I then used my tools to bring them into the formats I needed. When I had some additional graphics, I sent them via disc to the graphic artist and received the reworked graphics back. The reception of the press, at least in Germany, was very positive. How would you sum up the commercial success of the game? In German-speaking countries, the game was quite successful, but it could have been even better if we would have released it before the Christmas period. Unfortunately, we only finalized it in January, as we had some problems with the support of the Sound Blaster sound cards. Lessons learned? Always be ready before the Christmas season. We received lots of great reviews, for example in ASM, one of the leading games magazines in Germany at the time. The game received 11 out of 12 points and got the certificate ASM hit. The magazine Powerplay had it in their edition of the best 100 games in 1994. Pizza Joker rated it with 81%, Pizza Games with 78% and even 4 years later Computer Build rated the game with very good and value for money winner. Even the newspaper Frankfurter Allgemeine on April 26, 1994 had a very positive article. The game was also bundled together with Lemmings and Star Wars Rebel Assault for the popular German computer chain Phobis High Screen. And Ubisoft had it in their Golden Collection 1 compilation. The German television station Sat1 planned a Sat1 software edition of the game, but stopped their plans to sell computer games. In English countries it was not as successful, maybe because of the limitations of the English version that I mentioned already before, and business simulations are just not as popular in the US markets. In the US and UK it was published by Microprose. The Amiga version was number 4 in the charts, so that was quite successful. Interestingly, some of the reviews mentioned that the game is too difficult. From my point of view this is not at all the case. You can learn how to manipulate the stock market and when you know some historical facts you can use them to your advantage. Zeppelin was the last game you have developed. Why did you stop making games? After my master in medical informatics, I decided to join the pharmaceutical industry and therefore didn't have much time to continue in the computer game business. The video game business was changing at that time. It required more resources and budget per project, so it was difficult to still do this in a small team. I still have lots of ideas, and from time to time I'm still thinking to develop these. Some time back I sold one of my ideas to a company, but unfortunately never made it to market. It was a simple idea and I received the rights back. Still today I'm thinking and asking myself if I should use and sell this idea again. The possibilities today with mobiles and tablets are a great opportunity to start again with an exciting idea and a small team. One last question my audience definitely can't wait to get an answer to. 
Who is Roseanne? Good question. I always wanted to have a little bit of romance in the game. We also wanted the player to have some additional goals to achieve, and not only by building up a successful business. This is why we introduced the flight records and some other features. I was thinking about a nice name for this romance and came up with Roseanne. That was a name I had in my mind at that point in time. It sounds a bit like Roxanne from the song by the police. Just need to replace the X with an S. Thank you very much for your time and all your answers. Highly appreciated. So that's a bit of history about the game Zeppelin. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did so, consider subscribing the channels. Um, there will be more retro gaming and Star Citizen videos in the future. And with that, see ya!